Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my another video of Uber Eats clone. And now in this video we are going to talk about uh, cart service changes. So recently we have integrated cart uh, service like okay you can add items, remove items from the cart. But we were not maintaining the quantity of the items which you are adding in the cart. Let's say I wanted to order a pizza, five, five pizzas together right. So you are adding those items uh, in a different bucket as a separate item but it should be it can be maintained by just increasing the quantity 5 right so those changes i have done here which i'm just showing a code diff so let's say if you are sending a same menu item again so what we are doing we are checking okay this menu item exists in the existing menu items if it exists then we are just increasing the count if it doesn't exist then we are just increasing the count uh, i mean initializing the count with one if the dish menu item already added in the cart and you are adding it again then we can just increase the count by one so that is what we are doing existing item dot map and then increasing the count of that particular item and returning it and then you can just update the cart and just save it so that is a simple logic we are already doing and then there is another logic is delete cart menu item let's say i wanted to delete a particular menu item then i will just check in the payload which particular menu item you wanted to remove so removal is a one time only so let's say i ordered a, i'm ordering i have added a five burgers now if i just click on minus that means i'm going to hit the cpi and i will remove the the burger once then when you click on another again I will be able to remove it again. So it's like it will decrease the counter of the quantity if the uh, quantity is zero. Can't quantity is one and you remove it, then it will be totally removed from the the cart. So that kind of logic I am trying to update here. So we have just a post, and I think we need to change this to the put. These are the two methods we have. That is just going to add the menu item multiple times by increasing the quantity and then delete so this is what we are doing we are already a session user we already have a session so we can add the items to the card because you must be logged in for that then we have this checkout and the payment service sorry payment service and order service what is the rule so payment service is like okay when you start doing a checkout you fill the the details stripe payment integration we are going to do so when you add the information and start doing payment then we will trigger the payment service and payment service will initialize the payment and then we will use some third party payment service and once the payment is successful you will complete the order and set the payment as done complete so what i did instead of creating a new service because uh, payment is just only a simple crud create payment and uh, update the status of the payment i didn't create any new service just for the two apis what i'm doing is it's already added in the cart service so inside cart we have the menu items what we are going to put inside a payment the order id user id restaurant id and the menu items the big json object so this is we are going to put in the payment and the status status of the payment and then there is an order service which where we are uh, trying to maintain the order so this is the order entity where we are maintaining i mean i have this service so we can just change the things like uh, cart entity to the order entity these small tweaks we can do and we can have this order service up and running so in the order what we need we need to know what was the restaurant id what was the address id and what all you are ordering the menu item json object do we need to have any other field so this is the cart controller we will remove it to the order controller because i copied the as source folder from there so i just need to get rid of cart everywhere it's all about order service order controller order entity and order it you okay here also we are doing cookies based authentication so once user logs in and he has the cookies he can access all the all the apis except uh, the restaurant api in restaurant api we are using 
we are not using cookie based authentication we are passing the jwd token in the authorization header so this is my order entity order controller order service and order entity so that is just to make the order service up and running i mean i'm not changing much so it's all about create order and update order status okay so this is my order service this is the order module here also i will fix the, the imports so this is order entity and then order controller and order service so this is how we define the module so this is the domain module comprising all the controllers modules and services here we are importing domain module so we are good okay so ports are fine here order service is running on 3006 and payment service is running on 3009 we will check we have the postgres container and the database okay there is order api postgres is also there and for the payment also i think we have here we have 5433 order api so things are good i mean we can just uh, bootstrap the order service it's running on port uh, 3006 that is for uh, authentication because we are using this strategy which is doing a token based uh, strategy which is extracting the token from the cookies and uh, then we have this auth guard so what we need do we need role based auth guard no i think we can just remove it because any user can place an order so we will just get rid of this we will just use a uh, use guard or access token guard so access token guard means your cookies should contain the access token i mean you should already be a logged in user and when then then only you can access the create order or update order status so here you can see this is the access token strategy that is using uh, from auth bearer token so that we need to change so what i will do is i will i may copy this jwt strategy from the user service and i will copy it i think i can copy the whole syntax and paste it uh, in my auth strategy so what it is doing is it is trying to access the cookies now another thing is for accessing the cookies in the nest yes you need to have a cookie parser similarly like in express you have a cookies parser the same module you need to have in uh, nest yes and you need to register that middleware otherwise what will happen is you won't be able to access the cookies so cookie parser is npm module that we need to add uh, in all the applications i think which are using the cookies based authentication and i think all the services are doing the same so we will get rid of this so inside main.ts first we will import the cookie parser and then app.use cookie parser so that we are registering this middleware so why we register that so that we can start using it so cookie parser once you register then only your http request the handlers should be able to access the cookies either in the middleware either in the request request.cookies so here we will just register this cookie parser and app dot use cookie parser and you call it so this is how you can register the cookie parser and i think uh, if it is not there in the Card service, same we need to do. So let's check main.ts, cookie parser is not there, app.use. So this is like a same as express, you are registering a middleware for the next JS. Okay, we have cookie parser, so we are good. At least cookie parser is now available on everywhere. So we can send the cookies, so that's session cookies, and we can access the APIs, whatever the APIs we have. Now let's say if I now how the, the flow will be of the stripe. So you will initiate the stripe payment. I mean I you can ask chat GPT like how it really works. I got the answer. So it's a simplified process. And we need to understand how it really works. Okay, you will do the API integration. I mean you will build the API. And the stripe requires a payment intent first. So you will create a, some URL on the server side that will give you the client secret in the response okay 
and then there is a second API so here you can see create payment intent what it is doing is uh, it is just returning you the secret first of all install the stripe server side this is the server side stuff and the react side we will do something else so here we are creating a payment intent stripe dot payment intent dot create okay what is your amount what is your usd and then just return the client secret from here from payment intent will give you the client secret okay now this client secret will be used by the react component so here you can see in the react component first i am doing a fetch i got the client's uh, secret in the response so i did a set client secret and then i am doing a handle submit so there is a submit button which is saying okay do the payment there we are checking okay stripe is there card element or uh, upi element is there then we are just getting the, the element get card element and then we are just checking success and the failure of the payment if it is success then you might be able to process the order or you might show some successful message to the user okay your payment is successful something like this because we are using totally third party and because they are already good at it so we don't need to build the whole payment gateway interface and all we can just use a stripe payment so on checkout so we have added the items in the cart and now we are doing checkout so we we need to select an address and basic things okay we need to check the session exist select the address in which you want to, to have a product delivery then uh, what you will do you will create an order once you do the checkout and create the payment in progress so order status will be initiated and the payment status will be in progress and then you will do the stripe payment checkout and here the stripe will play a major role because once you get the success from the stripe you can update the payment status to complete an order status to be now to be processed because the payment is successfully done now it's on us to take the action on the order status which is now being processed so you will actually assign a delivery partner and all sort of stuff we will do so here this is what we will do and here once the stripe payment success is done so lots of things will happen at the react side because what stripe does is stripe has a we are going to build an api at the server side that will give you the payment intent secret the payment intent secret you will take into the react component and going to initiate the payment and once the payment confirmation is done through the stripe card element like credit card or debit card then you will actually update the payment and orders and all so here we will explore a lot about the stripe card interface and all those things so here i can see stripe web element and i can start exploring something i have already integrated in couple of my projects so i already know how it really works for even for multi-currency but here uh, we are going to integrate it to using credit card okay so where you need a card number expiration date and cvc code and then you just do a payment right so if you explore the documents here uh, payment element so stripe is like a very popular library and it provides you all these different interfaces because you might be doing a payment using Klarna and in India you might be doing payment using UPI so all sort of integration is already there and if you do the credit card then uh, you can just use a mock credit card like the dummy credit card for this so I'm just running some services to play around with this whole setup and you already know how to start the services go to your NX console start proxy start user start uh, start uh, restaurant app restaurant service and start payment service start proxy service start admin service that's it i mean not many right obviously there are many services now we have built and we need to start all of these to to work end to end right here we have order and this is a card so we need a payment uh, middleware i think payment we can create i mean payment and card are both are residing in the same service it's uh, still pointing to the localhost 3004 payment service so it's a reverse proxy payment middleware we need to register it in the app module 
so here we can register it so whatever the whenever the request is coming for payment service we are going to forward it this to this middleware which is again forward this request to 3004 and here i can see my proxy is running now i can this can forward a request based on the path like auth service to auth uh, restaurant service to the restaurant order service to the order and a payment, payment service to the payment service okay now next thing is we are going to do is in environment we have this port and all so here we will just try to do the sign in here i can check the docs also to check okay there is a payment apis exists so here you can see the payment apis exists and payments are taking order id restaurant id and the menu item id because before creating the payment you should already have initiated the order so that's why we are adding the order id in the payment now we can we can just play with this so this is the payment controller and we will check if the proper authorization is there okay there is no auth guard added so and this is the post and the put api So we will start checking things here this is the payment status order id restaurant id and here what we are doing inside this is we are creating the payment we are first finding the payment record and then we are updating the status that is just like okay completing the payment once it is done so before even doing a payment processing through the stripe we are actually creating the payment and creating the payment record creating the order record and once the payment is successful we are updating the order status and the payment status this is a card and this is how we are applying the auth guard so obviously we need to have auth guard because only the logged in user with the proper session in the cookies can access these apis so this is the access token guard which is checking your authorization i mean access token in the cookies and then validating the cookies x are correct or not so here this is all unauthorized that is correct so what we can do is we can just do a simple login now i might be having some cookies so you can see when i hit the apis this is the cookies and uh, this is wrong we don't need to pass them in the authorization header because this this service is cookie based so in this service you don't need to set them in the authorization header first let me fix the apis create payment should return something so i will return the data and the put api should return the status code 200 that's it so this api is working not because you are passing something in the authorization but you are passing things inside a cookies because we already logged in and cookies are something associated with the domain so if you have the cookies for the local host the same cookies will be forwarded when you are hitting these apis like okay create payment update payment create cart update cart or all those apis are already carrying the cookies here we are adding something in the cart and i am able to showcase because the cookies are being forwarded by the browser here i and now if, if i add this once add this again then count will increase so this is what the change i have done from the previous video that we are maintaining the count instead of pushing the object directly first we are checking that the same menu item exists then increase the count instead of pushing the newer menu item and here we can actually delete the particular item so just change this type we need to fix this in the dto this thumbnail url it should be just a string and then uh, here i can just uh, okay there is an array going somewhere so you can see count is four now if you just hit it then count will decrease because you are actually removing the item from the card so this is how it is managed i refactored the code and now it really works fine you can actually add remove anytime and in the cart and a quantity is one and you are removing it that means that item food menu item will be removed from your cart 
so here we are in the uber eats now we will start looking at the component side like the front end component how we are doing it so now let's see in the ui components uh, what we can change so this is our restaurant uh, checkout landing page right and this is where we are adding the item to the cart and removing item from the cart so we need to see what apis we are actually hitting remove item to the cart we are actually doing delete and this is post so that should work uh, here let's see what is happening here reset and start adding items so i think the cart uh, api is adding the items and it is also giving us in the response payload it should be giving us the count okay so we should start showing the count and the price and the total you need to pay for item right that we can see in the redux state also it's coming back so we just need to put that in the html that this is the item and these are the this is the quantity and this is the price we need to pay i think there is a count property we need to expose on the front end so we are printing count and price both the these values and we can uh, just also multiply both the values by just converting them to the number okay now we can see the same now we can see that uh, correctly and here this is how we are adding the items keep adding and for removal we will see what is happening but the add is working fine it is increasing the quantity when i keep adding so but when i am removing it i think i am not hitting the correct api looks like or there is some issue with the payload so your internal server error let's see what it is cannot read property of id okay so menu item dot id i need to check are we even sending this payload because menu item is part of the payload which you are sending in the api if the menu item is not there that means something is wrong okay we are hitting the delete api and we are expecting the payload to be passed so exios dot delete doesn't take a payload body right because delete is actually deleting the resource it is never designed to pass the payload so i think and i'm doing the same mistake here it should not have a payload we can just convert that post api to the put api so here this remove cart item and this is uh, exios dot delete so delete is just taking if you see the argument url and the config right so we can just send it as a put and then we can also change that in the api so we already have the api service which is a cart service go there and change the controller and change that to delete to put post and delete this will be converted to put no need to change anything it's everything is going to be the same and now we can start playing with this uh, thing i think we need to reload the front end currently it's still pointing to delete because but delete api is not even there so maybe we can do hard refresh so it can start reflecting the changes which we have done for the api so now after reload we also need to fix this once you actually reload the page it's not showing the current correct uh, cart items inside this and now you can see the items count is getting decreased increased okay and based on that price is also getting updated because what we are doing is we are playing with the redux state and this right sidebar is getting the data from the redux so automatic refresh is happening in the redux state and redux state is automatically getting populated in your right sidebar because right sidebar is also listening to the api this we need to fix because i don't know why when you reload the page it's not showing the, the correct set of uh, menu items which we have added in the cart it's showing this panati panitika which is i think the default template 
so let's see there should be a get api i like fetch the the cart menu items when you reload the page and it should be happening so fetch cart items what it what it does is it actually fetches the information which is in the cart so when you reload and you are logged in that means uh, you already have the items added in the cart So here we will see the API, what is happening with the cart API, it is giving us some wrong data. Maybe there are there is already a duplicate record exists in the database. So this can be fixed from database because while fetching the list, what we are doing dot find one. So wherever we dot do a dot find one based on this restaurant ID, we are just returning it. But I think there is a duplicate record exists in database that's why it is just giving you the first record which contains the menu item which has only one element so here if you can see we are doing a find one operation list user card dot find one where user id equal to user id so it's better to look into the database how the the content looks like so i have deleted the duplicates from database and now it works fine it works as expected when you keep adding the items it is increasing the item count and when you're decreasing it is decreasing the item count and when you reload the whole state is there because we are fetching the latest i mean we are fetching the record from the database and we are populating that in the redux state okay so this is all about the whole cleanup we have done for the cart now in the next video we'll start preparing uh, our things for the stripe stripe payment integration order service and the payment service.